Good afternoon. It's Thursday. It's 3.08 and it's time for you to be adrenalized. That's right, folks. It's time to get that blood flowing and get re-energized. Why? Because you're here. You're alive and it's time to be motivated to live your best life. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Tom Marino Show. I am your host, Mindset and Success Strategy Coach, Tom Marino. Thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, I want to hear from you. We're going to open up the phone lines. Give us a call, uh, 631-451-1039, 631-451-1039. And listen, if you're you're a little shy to come on the radio, reach out to me at tommarino.com. That's tommarino.com. Or if you are just a texter and like to text, reach out to me at 516-588-0750. That's 516-588-0750. All right, I want to thank New House Restoration, our sponsor, uh, where they turn your damaged old house into a new house. Visit them at newhouserestoration.com. That's newhouserestoration.com. If you had a fire, flood, sewer backup, or you have some asbestos in your house and you need it removed, contact New House Restoration. Give them a call at 631 604 8590. That's 631 604 8590. Uh, Happy Thursday, everybody. We are another week done, another week down. I just feel like last week to this week just went very fast. We had such a busy weekend. Uh, My son was in a baseball tournament all weekend, back and forth to Staten Island all weekend. Not fun, people. Not fun that Bell Parkway five days in a row. So uh, I get it. So if you're sitting in traffic right now, I hope that you're pretty close to home. But one of the things I wanted to mention from last week Remember when we had Dr. Kayla Nelson on last week and she, we were talking about how we show up for our families, right? When we get home, right? So on the way home, mark a spot in the road that you start to ask yourself, how do I want to show up for my family when I get home? How do I want to show up for the people in my life when I get home? So wherever you are right now, if you're at that spot, it's time to think about it. And if you haven't picked a spot yet, this is the time to think about it. This is the time to say, What do I want to do when I get home to show up for the people in my life? All right. We have a great show for you today. I am so excited. We have Anthony Sabatino here. Anthony is the CEO and founder of ASPF Solutions. ASPF Solutions is a marketing company with headquarters in New York City geared toward creating and managing social media content for small to medium-sized companies across the country. Anthony, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you so much, Tom. Happy to be on. Uh, It's fantastic to have you on. I'm so excited that you're here. So, Anthony, tell everybody a little bit about you. Yeah, definitely. So, as you mentioned, my name is Anthony Sabatino, the CEO and founder of ASPF Solutions. Uh, I started the company a little over two years ago, and we were actually talking a little bit off air. Uh, Literally, July 11th was a two-year anniversary. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Congratulations. Two years in. That's a good thing. That is certainly a good thing. Even better that I'm happy to be here talking to you about it. So, uh, so two years in, and yeah, we have a headquarters in New York City. So basically what we do is, and I'm the CEO and founder of it all, so we kind of oversee it all. We create content for uh, small to medium-sized businesses and make sure that we can manage and optimize it for them across social media to help build their top of funnel brand so that they can eventually, obviously, do things like make more sales, but even more so have something that can remain recognizable in a marketplace mm-hmm. that only continues to become even more saturated over time. So that's what we do. Yeah. So with all the with all the social media out there and everybody is selling everything. Yeah. What is what is your secret? What is a top funnel brand? What is what is what does that mean? So it's really leaning into uniqueness, right? So every brand, I'm a big, big believer in this. Every brand has something authentic and specific to them. Okay. Okay. So take it for us, for example. We're a marketing company. There's I could throw a rock and find a marketing company. You know what I mean? Uh, but what makes us different is a litany of different things, and we portray that in our content to me as well as my personal brand to make sure that gets across. So top of funnel in many ways is making sure that when we're branding something and through their marketing channels, we're not being super transactional. Okay. And which that's interesting, right? Because if you look at, yeah. Yeah. So how, do you, how do you get business if you're not doing a transaction? <laughs> so it's a lot of it comes down to like short-term gratification, all of that great stuff that I'm sure you can speak very highly on. Yep. Um, but as a brand, think about it. When you're putting something that's extremely transactional out to a marketplace, especially when you're a smaller brand, you're literally objectifying your audience and have mm-hmm. you've given it no time to simmer. So you're simmering right now and it's not a full-blown fire. So let's not act like it is, right? Right. So if you're selling from the get, everybody's going to completely put you in a box of, oh yeah, they sell this. 
but is that all you are? Is that what you want to be known for? I certainly don't believe so. And I don't think many brands do. You know, that's a great point. You know, so many times, you know, especially on social media here all the time, especially as a coach, you are your brand, right? Mm -hmm. So I, there's no other Tom Marino that's a coach. Well, there might be another coach, Tom <laughs> Marino, but he doesn't have Tom Marino coaching on Instagram. He doesn't have TomMarino.com. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm my own brand. And one of the things that um, my social media person encourages me to do is to really put yourself out there more. And why, why is that? What's the secret to that? What do people want from us? Well, to your point, when you put yourself out there, you've just given yourself the best possible chance at showing the authenticity of what your brand is. Because to your point, there is no other Tom Marino coaching. Right. So by you putting yourself out there more to your person's recommendation, you've given yourself your best shot at humanizing what someone might not know and might potentially put you in a box with mm -hmm. other coaches. Mm -hmm. That's not the case in reality. But from a consumer standpoint, without any other direction, that's what they're going to do. Right. Because you're building the authentic you, right? You're creating that authenticity. You're showing the side that makes you different, right? People always say, well, how do you make yourself stand out from the rest? And the key comes down to being authentic, mm -hmm. being bu building relationships with people. Would you say that part of that branding is how you relate, you build relationships with your audience? Absolutely. And part of the idea of building a relationship is to not sell to them constantly. Right. That'll end that relationship really quick. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the thing. I feel like everybody is selling something, right? You get those messages, DM'd, what are you selling? What do you want from me? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's hard because you haven't built that relationship and people need to see you in many different facets in many different ways. They need to see the whole person that represents the brand. Sure. And so we work with small to medium-sized businesses, right? So a lot of times we're not even working with personal brands. And that's a really interesting, I think, you know, segue into something. Yeah. Because when you're a company, a lot of companies, other than yourself, because you're, you know, a personal brand coaching, but a lot of just regular brick and mortar sometimes, but even just online businesses, they don't want to be the face of it. Right. So how do you humanize something if you can't be, if you can't show personalization behind it? That's a tricky card, you know? Um, but again, what it comes down to is really leaning into what that brand is authentic. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm sure that's, I mean, yeah. How, how do you, how do you make pest killing part of your brand? How do you be authentic about that? Right. I mean, that those are the kinds of challenges. What, like, what is, what is the best way to take something that is like a product mm -hmm. and create a brand around that? Well, um, it's an amazing way to ask that question. And the best way for me that I've learned in the 100 plus companies I work with is building access. So okay. it's an interesting term to use there, especially when you talk about a product, because when you think of access, you think of almost like a service, right? Mm -hmm. If I can get access to Tom Marino, that's a service you're providing, right? right. When you're a product, you can build access in different ways. I'll give you a quick example. So I worked with a beer company once, and one of the things that they were really trying to do, because they're a product, they sell beer, was we want to build our brand. So one of the things, and I was consulting them at the time, I said, listen, let's build a level of access to behind the scenes that other people don't know about. So let's show them how you're stirring the hops. Let's show them how the, their boxes are getting on warehouses, trucks. And uh, all of a sudden you start building a brand and you start realizing that you guys do it differently than Anheuser-Busch and all these other big brands who have no interest in doing that. Right. But that's your biggest weapon. Right. Is, is showing the process, yeah. showing being the level of transparency. Yeah. So Anthony, how do people contact you? Well, best way is always through email or through Instagram. My email is anthony at ASPFsolutions.com or my Instagram handle is Anthony Sabatino ASPF, all one word. So that's Anthony Sabatino, ASPF on Instagram, and that's Anthony at ASPFsolutions.com. So um, if you have a question for Anthony and you want to ask him while he's here in the studio, give us a call at 631-451-1039. That's 631-451-1039. Especially if you're a company that's struggling to establish your brand. We have Anthony here. He's an expert at this. He does this every single day. He's done this for hundreds of companies. And, and the guy himself, we're going to talk about his Instagram following in the next segment. But uh, listen, I want you to visit TomMarino.com and fill out a contact form if you'd like to hop on a call, especially if you are a solopreneur, if you're a small business owner and you're struggling right now with either some stress or overwhelm. And, you know, this week, I don't know what it is in the universe, but I've had a lot of people reach out to me that are small business owners going through divorce. So if that's you, reach out to me at TomMarino.com or text me 516 588-0750. All right, we'll speak to you right after this break. Hey, this 
This is Tom Marino of the Tom Marino Show here. Imagine you wake up and you've had a major sewer backup in your home. Well, let me tell you about a company that I've worked with personally, Newhouse Restoration, where they take your damaged old house and make it a new house. For any water, fire, mold, or asbestos damage, please call them at 631-604-8590. That's 631-604-8590. Newhouse Restoration. And welcome back to the Tom Marino Show. I am your host, Mindset and Success Strategy Coach, Tom Marino. Thank you so much for tuning back in on this, what is turning out to be right outside our window, a gloomy Thursday afternoon. It looks like it's about to rain. I I know there was some rain in the forecast, but uh, if if it cools it down, that's all I care about at this point. But if it doesn't cool it down, then stay away, rain. Um, We are speaking with Anthony Sabatino from ASPF Solutions. Uh, ASPF Solutions is a marketing company uh, who creates and distributes and manages social media content for small to medium-sized business companies. Anthony just told us he's been in business for two years and he just celebrated his second anniversary. Uh, uh, What? 10 days ago on the 11th. Yeah. So fantastic. That's awesome. Um, so Anthony, before the break, we we're talking about how the importance of not appearing transactional in your brand and building and, and not just being, you know, somebody selling something all the time. And we talked a little bit about that and we said what sets you apart. And that was a really cool uh, snippet that you gave about like the brewing company and showing how they market everything and how they put their process together. So what is, when you talk about omnipresence of brand, because in your pre-interview, uh, we, we talked a little bit about omnipresence of brand. What do you mean by that? Yeah. So right now, and that can change over the next however many years, right? But omnipresence basically meaning how can we be everywhere? Everywhere someone's going to be, where the attention is currently living, can we be there, right, as a brand? And can we produce whatever level of content that would be on whatever platform would be, um, you know, indigenous of that platform? Can Mm -hmm. we do it properly? So that's kind of what I mean by omnipresent. Can we use Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok? Can we use that to appeal to our audience and potentially build a brand off of that? Right. That's kind of what omnipresence means. So it's really putting yourself as on as many channels, platforms as possible to where the attention is, where the attention is. Right. I mean, you know, right now, everybody seems to be shifting to TikTok and TikTok. I mean, you, you go on TikTok and you see hundreds of thousands of views and people have millions of followers and it's like the fastest i don't know is 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 tiktok one of the fastest ways to scale uh yourself a bit yeah it is and it's for a very specific reason by the way it's not as you know just crazy as people think so there's some real um algorithmic reasoning behind it and it's not that complicated it's basically just down to organic reach meaning the amount of people that are living on a platform consuming it, just swiping through videos, how many of those are there in comparison to people who are creating on that platform? Okay. Right? So if there's a lot of people and there's not too many creators, you're going to get a lot more organic reach per each post that you create as opposed to a platform, let's say Facebook, who has so many users. Right. And yeah, they have a lot of creators. Right. But again, you see how it's buffering? Yep. Yeah. So, so basically, as the new thing comes in, you could do really well if you jump at the beginning of that. Yeah, yeah. Based on the organic reach of it, yeah. That's fantastic. So, Anthony, who are the types of businesses that you, you know, you mentioned before you work with a brewing company, you work with hundreds of companies. What are some of the key, what are some of your favorites or who is some of your favorite people to brand or companies to brand and their products to brand? Yeah, well, it's funny. So we work with, we've worked with a vast variety of different uh, businesses. However, as of recently, over the past couple of months, we've really put a big lean into law firms, accounting firms, things like that. Okay. Um, based purely on its, ext- the people who own those companies do find it very difficult to market and brand mm-hmm. just because it can be considered very quote unquote white collar or very difficult to get an authentic, real human approach to that kind of a service or a product. So we've taken a very serious approach to that because we think we can really make a big dent in that industry. Right. So we've been focusing a lot on people like that lately. Oh, that's fantastic. So lawyers, accountants, I mean, not you know, people who, who have, it's thundering outside people. I can't, it, I, I can't believe I just heard that yeah. in here. That must be really loud outside of the studio. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it is thundering right now. Uh, we're about to hit a little storm. but. That, that's really cool. I love how you, because 
lawyers and accountants they don't always feel like they're accessible right and and that was one of the things that we were talking about before is is how do we create a brand that provides access and you know i've been looking through a lot of them you know i mentioned before that uh, a lot of people that have been coming to me lately are people small business owners going through divorce and relationship issues and you know for the last several weeks i've been actually messaging many divorce lawyers so i must have been putting this out in the universe but i've been messaging a lot of divorce lawyers to see if i could collaborate with them and work with them and here you are working with attorneys i'm sure you're working with a few divorce lawyers i'm sure maybe we could talk about that after the show we can hook up but you know that seems really i mean so how what is something that you're bringing unique to this industry that you really feel that you are confident that you're going to make a big dent yeah, well, if you talk, let's just take lawyers, for example, law firms in general. A lot of what they think needs to be done is through a client process. Like, how do we get a client in the door? And right. absolutely, that's how you're going to bring the money in. Um, when you're talking about branding, it's really interesting. So I look at this as, can you provide value mm -hmm. in, a, in a space so that they, people can't get anywhere else? Right. That's a really interesting definition of value that it could be extremely valuable for people that are listening. The way I define value is, can I put something out there to a consumer that they can't get anywhere else? Mm. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. So law, I'm sorry. Yeah. So law firms in particular, can we provide education around what, you know, the particular practice of law they're doing? And can we educate that in a credible way that doesn't seem salesy? Right. 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 And, and that's the thing. Like one of the things that I think is so important is to have a strategy to your social media. And I have to do some work on this myself. But I'm really realizing that my goals are really to educate, inspire, entertain a little bit. Mm -hmm but then also to, to offer advice and, and to give people a, a roadmap forward. And I don't wanna be salesy. That's not my thing to be salesy. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important thing that we can do is really make sure that you have a strategy, right? So are, you know, when you say you're providing value and education and, and things like that, what else is an overarching strategy that you use on social media? Well, are you talking about me or for potentially clients? For clients, for you, whomever. Yeah, well, for me, again, I'm leaning into what works best for me. And so for me, I love being in front of a camera and speaking. Okay. So that works for me, right? If you're a lawyer who doesn't want to be the face of their company, there's no way that's going to work for them. So how can you portray the same value that that might bring to an audience, but maybe through different type of content? Right. You know, so to me, I love doing that. So for other law firms, for example, we really do, we lean a lot into the level of education that if you're a consumer who, let's say personal injury, right? right? If you're a personal injury lawyer, you're, you're hoping people get into, um, that you can help them get out of a car crash and, and you know handle their injuries. Well, maybe educating before that happens. I'm a big believer in the idea of try to put out content that almost takes away your potential of getting a client. Like educate that much to the huh. point where you actually are giving so much content away that they don't need to go to anybody else. They're going to you because that's the value. Right. They're coming to you because they don't think they can get that anywhere else without being sold to. Right. So they end up coming to you. And just the way natural funnels work, that's why I use the term top of funnel. Right. When you become the top, not the bottom anymore. Right. So it's really building your authority. It's yeah. really it's really using and providing information. And that's what people are craving. And that's what people are on social media for. They're on for information. I feel like on TikTok, you're there for entertainment mostly. But you're on for information. And I think that's what's really critical is, is how much do you put out there? I mean, because I don't like being in the in front of the camera all the time. I don't like doing reels. I don't like doing half of this stuff. But I know I have to, right? It's part of people seeing me because they have to relate to me. Mm. You know, I mean, so it sounds really cool how you balance that, right? I mean, you, you create a good content balance, I guess. Is that a term even? Yeah. yeah. Is it that you create that balance and, and things work. So... If you want some more information from Anthony, definitely reach out to him at ASPFSolutions.com. You can email him at Anthony at ASPFSolutions.com. That's Anthony at ASPFSolutions.com. Or just go to his Instagram and it's Anthony ASPF, right? Anthony Sabatino ASPF. Anthony Sabatino ASPF. Sorry about that, bud. All right. So, um, you know, we are talking about content. It is pouring outside right now. So I hope everybody is safe on the roads. I hope everybody is doing okay out there. It is coming down. It is literally, it's raining cats and dogs and hitting on this roof. I've never heard sound in this studio like yeah. this before. So if you have a question for Anthony or you want to know a little bit more about how to improve your business's brand, give us a call at 631-451-1039. That's 631-451-1039. We'll be here in the studio. And if you have a question, like I said before, 
we are talking. He's talk, working with attorneys. I've been reaching out to attorneys. If you're an attorney, you have a question, and you want to brand your company better, reach out to us here in the studio. Reach out to Anthony at ASPFSolutions.com. All right. We are going to take a quick commercial break. But in the meantime, if you have a question, give us a call, 631-451-1039, and we will speak to you right after this break. And welcome back to the Tom Marino Show. I'm your host, Mindset and Success Strategy Coach. Thank you so much for tuning back in. I hope that if you're out on the road right now during this thunderstorm, rainstorm that we're experiencing out here in the east end of Long Island, here at MacArthur Airport, uh, it is raining. It is pouring outside. It's been pouring. Came in like this big black cloud and just rained down on us. And I've heard sounds in the studio I've never heard before. So uh, I hope everybody is safe out there right now. Just make sure you're, you're driving safely and uh, leave a extra time if you're heading out there. Um, so we are speaking today to Anthony Sabatino of ASPF Solutions. Uh, ASPS, ASPF is a marketing company uh, dedicated to creating content, managing social media for small and medium-sized business companies. And Anthony's been giving us all of the insights into building brands that are not transactional that are really about the authenticity that you represent as a company as yourself whoever it is that you're branding whatever it is that you're branding so we, we've been talking about a bunch of stuff so anthony we were talking a little bit during the break about um your instagram now instagram is a mainstream for you correct mm -hmm, definitely and a couple of months ago, you had some issue with that, correct? One might say that. Yeah. I mean, it's it, so you lost your Instagram account for a little bit. Yeah. And at that time, you had a, tens of thousands of followers. Yeah. So you've rebuilt your account because you haven't really been present on that account. So it was hard to build a brand around that. So how did you, how did you recover there? Well, yeah. So in, in the meantime, I, I did a lot of uh, inside looking of the business, right? And that really, it was the blessing in disguise. It was the best possible thing that could have happened. Um, everything was going so well before, but a lot of things that I was blind to ended up being very clear by, by nature of that happening because it was just like a, a rug being pulled out. I love that, man. Yeah. It, it's like the opportunity in the midst of the storm. What is yeah. the, there's always an opportunity. We don't always see it. I'm so glad that you brought that up. So what was the opportunity? Yeah, well, so the infrastructure of the business was built so much around me that I wanted to expand it. You know, right. I wanted to be able to sustain much more workload that wasn't completely contingent on my time. And it was going well, and I was having so much fun, and I was helping so many different businesses. But I said, let me do it better. There's no reason why this has to be the capacity. Right. So that allowed me to see all those different moves I got, I got to make in the interim because I wasn't so overly focused and overly indexed on building my brand because that was what make, was making all the money. Right. right. So once that was gone, it forced me to see all those other things inside the business that ended up growing it much bigger now. Wow, that's fantastic. What was the biggest impact? Well, being able to provide a done for you service. So in, before that, I was doing a lot of consulting. So we would provide literally the entire strategy and spoon feed it to people. And however, the main issue we found was that we were still completely dependent on their ability to execute what we right. gave them. Um, we could give them everything, but we were our hands were off at that point. So once this happened, I said, it's very possible for us to do this for others because I built my personal brand using this strategy. I built my company brand using this strategy. I've told it to so many different people and it's worked. Right. I've seen the proof. Uh, but let's do it for others. Let's stop waiting for other people to do it for us. Let's help them do it. And they, they don't have time anyway. Let right. us do it, you know? Right. So you created a done for you business yeah. out of losing your Instagram account, basically. It's a funny way to look at it, but yeah. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> awesome, man. Listen, that's the opportunity. But it is impressive. You know, I, I always... You know, you have 46,000 or so followers on Instagram, and I'm sure you have, I don't even, what do you have on TikTok? Are you on TikTok? Yeah, not too much. I haven't been posting in a while. Yeah. So, I mean, what is part of building that kind of a following? What's the, what are some of the secrets to, to building a following on, on the social media platforms, especially Instagram? Yeah, well, you know, so it's different for everybody. Like I said, it's the authenticity of what works. The more you lean into it, the more people will become attracted to you. Right. What worked for me and what really helped me was I was spending a lot of time and a lot of money getting into 
networking groups that were in some many senses paid in order to get in these certain areas. Right. And I was able to network like crazy to basically endorse and be endorsed by a lot of people who had a lot more following than me. So I was basically, I was just niching into other people markets. That's right. why I built a lot of my following. And I started realizing that there were certain markets that were best for me to be included in that kind of right. circle. And, and by using social media as a vessel to make that happen, ended up building my brand a lot faster than others. Right. But in the interim, you have to understand, it's kind of like, it's funny, it's a very funny analogy, but you kind of think of it like almost steroids, right? With like working out, right. you can take all the steroids in the world, but you still got to work out, you right. know? Right. So I was, I was being in really, you know, powerful circles in terms of social media clout. However, I still had to make sure I was producing content that leaned into my authenticity. Right. right. So that, that's what worked for me and I still do that now. Right, and, and we were talking a little bit before the break about the importance of posting regularly and consistently. Mm -hmm. You said you're gonna start posting three times a day and, and you're gonna put some more stuff out there. Yeah. Is more necessarily better in, in, in all cases? Uh, I don't think there's anything that's all. I think there's always uh, <laughs> exclusions to things, but in most cases, volume is 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 key. Now, there's a very specific reason why. Is because when you're a smaller brand, and that's who I'm talking to right now, in, in reference to your question, if you're a smaller brand, that's your biggest weapon, nearly your only weapon, in terms of branding to get out to an audience, because you don't have the hundreds of the tens or thousands of dollars to po to boost out paid media behind these posts right. to get in front of all those eyeballs. Your only weapon is volume. Right. right. So th so if you are a smaller business, if you're a solopreneur, if you're a very small business and you're just starting out, volume is key. Oh, yeah. Because the more volume you have, the more likelihood it's going to be seen and then the more likely people are going to follow and that's going to build your brand. And the more authentic you are in those situations the better it's going to be you also learn a variety of different skills along the way you yeah. also learn you know what you're most comfortable doing what is resonating most with your audience there's a lot of advantages to doing it right so anthony we uh you know so we're talking to anthony sabatino of aspf solutions so anthony what is part of your process when you bring a new client in how does that work how do people get in touch with you how do they work to work with you and and get that done for you service yeah, yeah. So once we get in contact with you and you can go to the website, fill out a contact form, you can email me, we can set that up fairly quickly. Okay. Um, but once that's happened, once we're in communication, kind of go something like this. We have a couple step you know, process to make sure it's done perfect. So number one, we once we understand that there's interest and that we can absolutely help you and we're extremely confident in that, then we basically you can call it a clarity call. We're going to get on the phone on Zoom or in person if you're on the island. Um, and we're going to get un an understanding of what your ambition of what that brand is that you want to create. And then we're going to reverse engineer it. That's, okay. what it, that's what that call is going to be. And once we understand that, and obviously and this is after payment, onboarding and whatnot, but uh, once we're actually getting started, we're going to really have a clear image of what that brand you want to be and we're going to help create it. Once that's good, then I have a conversation with my internal team of mm -hmm. how exactly we're going to make that happen. So I'm extremely involved in the trenches and nearly every single brand that we work with because that's how important it is because I'm the one in that initial ambition call. Uh, once that's good and my team has a full understanding of what that is, then we start creating the content. And so with ASPF Solutions Service, we have a very great guarantee that I was extremely just, I was incessant making sure that I wanted this to happen. So with the day that you onboard, within seven days, you get all of your month's worth of content right there for us to gain feedback on. Okay. So let's say day one, today's what is 21st? Yep. 28th, you'll have 30 days worth of content for you to skim through and look through and give us feedback and green light it for us. Next wow. day, it starts posting. Wow, that's fantastic. So in seven days, you're able to take somebody from a clarity recall, reverse engineer it, and then build their 30 days worth of post. Yeah, and it's, by the way, that's not an easy thing, and it's certainly no, not just it me doing it. No, and it's not just me. If it was just me, to my point of why I transitioned so much throughout my Instagram losing, uh, none of that would be possible if I didn't build the infrastructure. So that entire two and a half months that I was on Instagram, I built an entire team, an entire business infrastructure that allowed for this to happen so that it can be as seamless as humanly possible, like I just described to you. Right. And that's why I'm so happy and proud talking about it. Wow, that is, that, that's fantastic. So now you've got a whole process. You can build 30 days of content. That, that's insane. So if you're a small business owner and you're really struggling to develop a brand, if you're struggling with, you know, getting yourself out there and you want, you just heard one of the secrets is all about volume. But you know what? It's working with Anthony. It's working with him and his team to get you to exactly where you want to be. So Anthony, how can people reach you? Sure. So best way is always through email, uh, which is anthony at aspfsolutions.com. You can also reach me personally on Instagram, Anthony Sabatino ASPF. That's fantastic. And Anthony, thanks so much for being here. This has been awesome. Um, so listen, this is Tom Marino. And if you are just tuning in, 
we've been speaking with Anthony Sabatino. He's going to be here with, with me in the studio for another 10 minutes after the next commercial break. But give us a call, 631-451-1039, 631-451-1039. Ask us this question. Give us a call. If, again, if you're a small business owner and you are struggling to get your content out there, this guy's got the secret. I can't I can't endorse him enough. He, he's totally convinced me that I got to do a little bit more at my social media, get out there a little bit more. And listen, go follow me at Tom Marino Coaching on Instagram. That's Tom Marino Coaching. And listen, if you want to just text me, text me at 516-588-0750. That's 516-588-0750. Especially if you are struggling right now with some kind of stress, you're burnt out, you're overwhelmed, you're not sure what the direction is forward. Let me help you clarify that. 516-588-0750. We'll talk to you right after this. Hey, this is Tom Marino of The Tom Marino Show here. Imagine you wake up and you've had a major sewer back up in your home. Well, let me tell you about a company that I've worked with personally, New House Restoration, where they take your damaged old house and make it a new house. For any water, fire, mold, or asbestos damage, please call them at 631-604-8590. That's 631-604-8590. New House Restoration. And welcome back to the Tom Marino Show. I'm your host, Mindset and Success Strategy Coach Tom Marino. Thank you so much for tuning back in. I hope you just survived that rainstorm if you're out here on Eastern Long Island. Um, but we are speaking today with Anthony Sabatino of ASPF Solutions. Anthony has been giving us so much insight into content creation, into how what his process is, how he can literally turn the key in seven days for you. You have a clarity call with him and he's got 30 days of post for your business and it's a done for you service. I can't emphasize how great that is as a small business owner myself. It is not easy creating content and it, I struggle with that. And there's a lot of reasons why I struggle. One is I'm a little camera shy and I really shouldn't be camera shy, uh, but that's why I guess I'm on the radio and not on television <laughs> because I'm a little camera shy. But I, I also think that there's, we were talking in between the break about how there's barriers sometimes to creating content. There's barriers to get putting yourself out there. And, and it sometimes has to do a lot with your emotional state. Mm -hmm. Like the last couple of weeks, me, myself, I will totally admit, I have been in another place mentally that just trying to, just a little bit of stress myself, you know, all the things that I preach people to not do, I'm, I've been doing. And it, it's kind of it's kind of stopped me from making a reel on my own. It stopped me from getting in front of the camera. So Anthony, how do you help people that are struggling with stuff like that? Yeah, so the first, Thing that needs to be i think approached is are you genuinely serious about becoming the face of a brand if you are then all of these become open questions and they don't necessarily have to have all these heavy strings attached to them they really don't right if you're genuinely serious and dedicated to being a face of a brand then all these things as valid as they are they don't have to ha be so heavy right they don't right. have to feel like chains on your back they can just be things you know you're going to have to deal with and just like everybody else who does it, you'll deal with it too, right? But there's a lot of um, interesting things that happen emotionally to your point when you have to feel like you're putting your fullest version of yourself out into an audience right. and uh, you know, awaiting their feedback. And most of the time, due to the normal aura of what social media is claimed to be, it's usually negative, you know? Right. Um, so how do you deal with that emotionally? So I'm no expert, but at least from my point of view, if I understand that what I'm putting out, the reason I think the reason it's so difficult, by the way, is when you're putting out content, especially in a position like you, like when you're helping others, you're putting all of you out there and you feel so passionate about what you're putting out. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a facade. There's nothing, you know, it's not like a product, like a label that you right. can slap on a bottle that's getting criticized. It's you, it's your right. beliefs. So that's why it hurts so much, you know? Yeah. Um, so when I would post content on my personal page, like I do now, um, I had to be very conscious of that. Like, oh, this is really what I believe in. I'm putting my face and my body and everything in front of a camera and I'm talking. That's a big deal, you know? So number one, I think uh, the best way to not get too overwhelmed is just celebrating the fact that it is that big of a deal. You care. That's why you right. feel that way, you know? Right. Um, you're brave enough to take the chance. Right. I, you know, that's a great That's a great point. No, I'm thinking about it. Like my business coach, um, who I've been working with for a couple of months now, she always just says, just put it out there. Just start. Just start doing it and you could always make it better. You could always do it and people, maybe they'll see it, maybe they won't, maybe it resonate, maybe it will, but you never know how you're gonna hit your audience either, right? Mm -hmm. you, you have to have an intention with what you're putting out there. Mm -hmm. And my intention always is let's, let's make sure that I put something out there that resonates with someone who's looking for help mm -hmm. and that it's 
maybe gets them to ask for that help, yeah. right? That, that, that's how I try to get through it. But there is a lot too, because you're building your authority, right? We talked about building authority and the importance of being authentic, but you also are becoming this expert for people, right? And people struggle with that. It's like imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. how, who am I to give that advice to someone? Right. Right. And, and that's where I think a lot of people get caught up. Do you see that with what you're doing, working with a lot of these companies that aren't so great at doing that? Yeah, but also, right, when, if you're trying to put yourself intentionally as, an, as a credible authority figure and you're doing it in a particular way where, like, you're intentionally almost manipulating the potential outcome of what your audience wants to think, right? you, again, social media has been set, I can't stress this enough, social media has been said and done with for 10 plus years now. We know how it works. We can smell it from a mile away when someone's doing that, right? which is why I said in the beginning, you have to lean into so much of your authenticity because as much as it might be more vulnerable and raw to do so, mm -hmm. that is actually what builds your credible power, right? Right. So you think about it in a hundred different variations of life, but like when you're putting your full blown self into something like that frequency of doing that is so much more powerful. You attract so much towards more towards you right. than if you're putting on a facade, putting on a play for a potential outcome they're trying to manipulate. Right. So yeah, it's difficult. And I don't think there's anything that should be trying to steer you away from the difficulty of it. I think the idea is to celebrate how difficult it is. Yeah, I, and I think that's a great point. I, and, and I try to be vulnerable in a lot of my posts. I try to ex talk about my experiences. I, I put, posted something that got a lot of views, you know, just like how I was bullied as a kid, as how, how I was picked on as a kid. And, you know, opening up about that and being vulnerable and putting yourself out there when not in the context of a coaching or a therapy session, yeah. that is very difficult for a lot of people to do, but that's what attracts the humanness and the authenticity to who you are as a person. And that's what people are looking for. People are so tired of being lied to and they're, they don't like the facades and they don't like the people that, and, and those people, their content dies off pretty fast. Would you say that that's true? I would, I would. I'd also say that, you know, a lot of what we're, when we view another person's content, whether it be a company or a personal brand, a lot of how we feel about it is completely unconscious. And so when I look at a brand and I can clearly see that they're trying to manipulate an outcome, meaning potentially a sale, they're just extremely transactional. And there's right. nothing wrong with transactions. The whole point of building a brand is to make more transactions. Correct. But the intention of manipulation is what needs to be avoided. So if I said something like, you know, I don't want my brand to be, um, like, I don't want it to, to put in a position where I'm trying to get something that's not fully me. Right. Got it. So, so I think that one of the most important things is to be as vulnerable as possible, mm -hmm. to come out of your comfort zone, to get through that. And just sometimes you just got to put out and just do it. You just got to put it out there. Just do it and make sure that you get the best result for you. Mm -hmm. It's not about the transaction. It's about getting the best result for you because if you get the best result for yourself, you're going to give that to that person that may be viewing it and you're going to help them to get to the place that they want to get. So Anthony, tell us a little bit uh, more about the types of companies that you work with. You had mentioned before you've been working with a lot of lawyers and CPAs. What are some of the other companies you've worked with? Yeah. So we work with a lot of home services companies. Um, we've worked with some energy companies. We've worked with um, recycling companies, you know, a lot of things like that. We've mainly, not by no nature of our own intention, we've tended geared more towards services such as that. Mm -hmm. um, again, to my point earlier, it just seems very difficult for companies who own that and have internal teams. It's very difficult, it seems, to brand. Right. And any area that we can fill and gap, uh, bridge a gap, we feel like we want to, you know, play a part in. That's fantastic. So, um, how is the, what is the best way to reach you? Tell everybody your website, your information, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, so my website is www.aspfsolutions.com. You can find nearly everything there. Um, there's contact forms in there. You can find all my social media. Uh, my Instagram is Anthony Sabatino ASPF. You can always email me at Anthony at ASPF Solutions. Tom, thanks so much for being on the show, too. You know, listen, Anthony, this was great. This was a ton of great content. I really, I mean, you just gave me so many ideas and, and some, and, and really, it helped, you helped to organize a little bit more for me what's important, right? Mm. So thank you for that. I really appreciate that. And uh, if you are a small business and you are looking for ways to build your brand, your top funnel brand, and be the omnipresent brand on all the platforms, Anthony and ASPF Solutions is definitely a solution for you. It's definitely, you definitely want to reach out to him, ASPFSolutions.com. 
and email him at anthony at AFPS, ASPFsolutions.com and follow him at Anthony Sabatino ASPF on Instagram. Message him. He's got a ton of followers. He puts out great stuff. And really, he is here to help you and serve you. And listen, if you are a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, and you're struggling with some stress, overwhelm, or you're struggling with a relationship difficulty right now, I want you to give me a call at 516-588-0750. That's 516-588-0750. Or go to my website at tommarino.com, fill out a contact form, and let's get you scheduled for a call. Let's get you moving and clarifying what it is that you want and what you want to become and how you want to live your life and live the best version of yourself. All right, this is Tom Marino and the Tom Marino Show. Um, we will be back next week and I look forward to hearing from you. Until next time, choose your adrenalized life. Fine. Yeah. No offense to you.